Dubai I 103.8. 103.8. 103.8. 103.8. The UA Ministry of Health and Prevention has announced the first official case of coronavirus here in the UAE. According to the National News Agency, WAM, the individuals diagnosed with the flu-like virus, belong to the same family. They had travelled from the Chinese city of Wuhan, where the new strain of the virus was first detected. UAE medical officials have added that their condition is completely stable and they are under close observation. Are you worried about coronavirus. Definitely worried about the coronavirus. I was looking at going to Singapore for the F1 in September and to meet some friends who live in Sydney but now we're rethinking our plans. We want to see how this all plays out and obviously living in a hub that's pretty central like Dubai that has a lot of people passing through. At the airport they do really strict screening of everyone who comes in the country so I, at least I'm assured with that policy with that strict regulations in place. China is very near my home country which is the Philippines so it's a bit heartbreaking for me to hear that. I hope my family is safe there, so for their welfare, I am very worried. Travelling to New Zealand and not really worried about the coronavirus, I think what's for me won't miss me. And I think, you know, if we start worrying about every little thing, then we're going to be, you know, drowning in worries. So. No, not concerned. Those are just a few of the thoughts uh, of uh, listeners uh, and people down here uh, in Dubai Media City earlier on today. There is no shortage of opinion out there in WhatsApp groups, doing the rounds on social media at the moment. What to believe, what not to believe. Well, I think it's fair to believe a respected medical professional. That's why we've sought the advice and the expertise of the Senior Director at VPS Healthcare. Dr. Charles Stanford joins us live on the line. Dr. Stanford, thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. My pleasure, Tom. How can I help you? Let's start with the panic, if we can, because first uh, case or cases have been confirmed here in the UAE. Is there need to panic? No, I think panic would be the worst uh, thing to be uh, encouraged uh, within the UAE. Uh, we don't know how many cases are going to come here. Uh, there's a fair amount of restriction in terms of people coming out of China now. But it is a possibility. We've got one case. One case can infect two or three other people. They can infect more. And before you know, things uh, start to get worse. But the fact that this patient is now identified and kept uh, separate from others will probably uh, prevent any further uh, spread uh, locally around that family. Um, The panic seems to be um, sort of showing uh, coming to fruition in a number of ways. Panic buying seems to be one of the things that we're hearing reports of this morning. People looking to buy masks, do they help? Uh, They're uh, not very good in the sense that Uh, The bulk of masks that are uh, supplied, they don't fit tightly. They're not good at uh, actually uh, preventing bacteria or viruses, which are smaller than bacteria, uh, getting in around the edges, uh, etc. So the World Health Organization and the CDC in America are not uh, suggesting that they're very good. So, but if you feel if you feel there, uh, you need them, by all means, uh, take them. They may uh, be of some benefit but they're not totally preventative. So in terms of the best ways to protect oneself from the infection, what would those be? The best, the best way is, first of all, to avoid anyone who's coughing or sneezing. Uh, if you yourself have got a cough uh, uh, or cold or any uh, respiratory thing, uh, uh, if you're going to cough, turn your head away, uh, cover your face with a uh, tissue. The, the thing is spread by droplet infection. Now, that's not just what's in the air. Droplets get on to desks, get on to handles of doors, uh, get on to around uh, uh, bathroom sinks, etc. So uh, you need to just look after your. The main way to look after yourself is to clean your hands all the time uh, when you've touched something and before you touch your face, uh, especially your eyes uh, or, your, or your mouth or nose. That's very important. So uh, hand hygiene is uh, critical. You mentioned they're trying to avoid those that are showing symptoms of coughs or colds or otherwise. Uh, Easy to do within one's own home or or office environment. What about more crowded areas like the metro, like the malls, like food courts as well? Should should we be avoiding these places? Well, uh, I hate to say people have to live and until it's a a real epidemic uh, situation, I think one's got to use common sense uh, uh, about this. Uh, Obviously, if everyone stays in the house, 
then no, there is no spread. But how do you get your food? How do you uh, keep the society going? How do you have the train drivers, etc., uh, doing their work if they're staying in their house? So you, you mustn't get into that sort of panic uh, situation. Mm. The Ministry of Health will keep you informed with regard to what uh, needs to be done depending upon the number of cases. Remember that uh, in China, we're hearing about maybe 6,000, uh, across the world, 6,000 patients. That's 6,000 who have actually probably gone to hospital, been in hospital. Uh, there are probably thousands and thousands more who are uh, uh, around the community uh, who have got milder disease. So we're talking at the moment about 2.2% uh, of people uh, uh, with this coronavirus uh, 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 2.2%, 2, 2 3% who actually die. But that's only because they're of the ones who have come to hospital that are identified. There are thousands of others. So it's not as bad as SARS, for instance, mm. where 15% uh, of people uh, were dying from it. In fact, up to 50% of older people. And mares were 35%. Uh, we're dying. Ebola with 90% dying. It's not that sort of situation. So uh, you should be. People need to be guided by the advice that comes out from the Ministry of Health. Uh, and do you think that a lot of people's misunderstanding of that is driven by the use of the word epidemic and people's misinterpretation uh, of the word epidemic? The fact that that is used is that causing or spreading more panic? Do you think? Well, ep epidemic just comes from the Greek epi for on and demos from people. Ep epidemos, epidemic. Uh, so it, um, one person, if this happens to you or to your relative and the patient dies, that's a disaster. Locally within, locally within uh, uh, Wuhan uh, province, uh, there are a lot more people who are dying. So that's a, and for them, it is a disaster but it hasn't reached a sort of global epidemic situation yet. There are one or two cases outside the country. So uh, when you have to use common sense uh, about this again. Things will change. The pattern will change from day to day. The information coming out, you need data. Once the data comes out, that enables uh, the clinicians and the advisors to give you good advice rather than sort of, well, I think this will happen or I think that will uh, happen. So uh, we're, we're awaiting, they're uh, isolating, they've isolated the virus mm. and develop antigens from that. Antigens can be used then to develop uh, immunization. So within a couple of months, that will be available. In some of the previous epidemics of similar coronaviruses like SARS, uh, uh, some of the HIV drugs were uh, helpful. So uh, w this will all evolve as it goes along. Mm. Um, I think the message coming through loud and clear is to be sensible uh, and to take care. If people are concerned, Charles, what should they do? Uh, should they seek medical advice? If they're concerned, they should seek uh, medical advice. And better to f make it a phone call if you think you're yeah. really, if you've had exposure to someone who's really likely to have had it or, to have, or if you've come from a, a country that's uh, from China where the infection is uh, mainly. Uh, then, in fact, I think a phone call is better rather than going in the bus or the tram and infecting everyone around you. Dr. Charles Stanford, we can't thank you enough for taking time to speak to us this morning to allay some of those fears that are spreading this morning. And, and just last piece of advice, if we can, uh, Dr. Charles, is, is to those people out there. I mentioned earlier on uh, the curse of the WhatsApp group, the curse of the gossip that's doing the rounds at the moment. Uh, would your advice be just to heed that advice or to seek second opinions? Uh, I think second uh, second opinions. Uh, 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 and if you're talking about herbal changes and herbal medicines, etc., 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 there is no proof that these things are actually uh, working. So common sense. If you're really concerned, phone your doctor. Dr. Charles Stanford, the senior director of VPS Healthcare. Thank you so much indeed for your time this morning. My pleasure. Thank you very much for asking me. Thank you. This is Dubai I 103.8.